Hello, my name is Angus Connolly and I'm the product manager for our Flexcom software. So in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to construct a model using Flexcom Wave. So firstly I'll just create a new project workspace. Uh, so file new project, uh, give the project a name and a location on your hard drive. And now I'm going to begin to add some new components to the project view on the top, on the top left hand side of your screen. So let me start adding a device. Um, for example, let's say I want to model a uh, floating dual body point absorber. Um, so this uh, component now appears on the screen and it looks for several inputs. And because this is quite a high level component, it references other uh, subcomponents. It's looking for a power takeoff uh, component, it's looking for um, an upper and lower float, and it's looking for a mooring system of which you have several mooring lines and, and fairly connections and so on. So I need to actually define subcomponents. So let me just do that now as well. So I'll just uh, right click here and I look for some device parts. So let me add some um, float, float parts. So two, two floaters. You can add as many as you want. Let's maybe just throw in a few so you can see. So now I've got three different floats. So if I was to return back to the device uh, and I would look for the, the, the upper float, I now have a selection of three different components here. Um, let's say I just pick the first one. I'll give this a proper name now. Um, let me call this one just upper upper float. Upper floater. So then when I return back to the device itself, uh, you can see that this is actually renamed to, to upper floater. So it knows the linkages between the different components. The other two are still there even though I'm not using them at the moment. Um, I could define another uh, component like a PTO. This would be under device part, so I'd add a power takeoff. Um, I'll also add a mooring line. Now I've got all the components that I need. So I've got the upper floater. Uh, let's call this one a um, lower lower float. Um, the other one I can just leave sitting there. Now I've got the mooring line and I've got a power takeoff. So if I go back into the device itself now, um, I have an upper floater. I have a lower floater um, and I've also got the mooring lines pre-selected. So the next step really is to go in and to flesh out these different components. So if I was to go into let's say the upper floater, I need to start giving it some dimensions. So maybe it's like you know it could be it'll be like a cylindrical structure. So it'll be say, 10 meters in length. Um, I don't know 10 meters in diameter I'm just making up some um, very very generic inputs here let's say the center of mass is five meters above the base um, once I've got the dimensions there's another option here to put in some connection points so because I'm on the, the upper floor I won't really be connecting anything necessarily to it I'll be connecting it to the lower float but I won't be connecting any mooring lines to it but if I wanted to go into the lower floater uh, I could indeed put in a number of connection points so for example, if I wanted to connect up three mooring lines around the circumference uh, at various angles around the circumference, I can um, put in some request a connection of, uh, of, of re sorry, excuse me, request a creation of some connection points um, on the lower float. If you don't understand what any of the inputs means at any point in time, you can just press the F1 key, and that will bring up the uh, online help. Um, so it tells you exactly what each uh, component. But each input means so you can um, you can browse the help there at your leisure so I'll just hide the help again let's say the connection points are this one doesn't even have any dimensions yet so let's say it's 20 meters long and it's about five meters in diameter um, I can say that the connection points will be roughly halfway up along uh, the, 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 this, this, this floating um, this lower float um, and let's say I want the fairly locations to be maybe a few meters away from radially separated from the, the axis of this uh, floating uh, component. If I return back to the, to the device itself then uh, you'll, you'll see that there's actually these component, these connection points now can now be selected. So I am now connecting uh, said mooring line one from a certain location on the seabed up to a connection point on the floating device itself. So that, that's um, how you go about constructing the model, but rather than typing in all the inputs, um, you know, one by one, which would be more time consuming, let me just return, uh, open up a project which I created just a little bit earlier on for you. Um, let me just put this here. 
uh, won't bother saving that project. So now if I was to just to return to uh, the, this, this is a model which I fully created. Uh, so you can see now that I've got my power takeoff, uh, the power rating 286 kilowatts. I've got the upper and lower float called, in this case they're now called float and spar. Um, the center gravities of the floats are at particular locations um, with respect to the mean water line. And I've also now got the mooring system defined as well. So I've got three mooring lines attached at various uh, connection points on the lower float and they're anchored to the seabed at, at XYZ coordinates. Maybe let's have a look at uh, what that looks like on screen actually. So I can switch on the model view and hopefully I can see a preview of this model on screen. So there we have it. Uh, you can see both components. I'll zoom in a little bit. So we have an upper uh, float which is the one in yellow and then underneath we have a spar type structure which is the grey component and then we also, if you can see the mooring lines there, um, they're just displayed in green. So I might just walk you through some of the inputs in more detail as we uh, skimmed over them very very quickly there as I constructed the model. Uh, let's go to the, the float component for example. Um, so you can see it's got, uh, this, this would be the yellow boy on, right up top. Uh, it's going to have a certain uh, length, a certain diameter. Um, what you see on screen is, is a, just a nice visual representation of it as well. It's just, it, it looks more like a you know, it's for cosmetic purposes, and this comes from the profile file, which you can enhance the visual appeal of your model by putting in a quite detailed looking profile so that it looks very physically uh, realistic on screen. The upper float, because I'm not connecting any mooring lines to it, it doesn't have any connection points. Um, in terms of structural properties, it's got mass and inertia, obviously. Um, hydrostatic stiffness terms, which simulate um, buoyancy forces uh, as as, as the float moves up and down with respect to the, the mean water line, there will be hydrostatic stiffness terms there to represent uh, changes in buoyancy loads on the device. On the dynamic loads tab, um, there are inputs for, say, force REOs and added mass and radiation damping uh, as a function of frequency. These would come from uh, another program like uh, WAMLET or ANSYS AQUA, uh, boundary element codes which solve for radiation diffraction potential and we accept those um, inputs into FlexCom. There's actually a hydrodynamic data importer which just takes inputs from other codes like radiation diffraction codes and changes them into the format that FlexCom uh, requires. We can just cover that in another tutorial that's just to mention that that feature is there under the tools menu. Um, so the two, the two components, the two float, flotation components are virtually the same. Uh, mooring line is a very simple component it's um, got a certain length of mooring line. Let's zoom out a little bit so you can see the mooring line itself there. One of the lines uh, it has got a certain length. You can control the mesh density on the mooring line. So when we perform a simulation, we would use finite element solution technique to model the, the structural deformations of the mooring line, which will have a certain number of nodes and elements along the line. And the mesh density you specify here is basically what length of element we're using uh, along each mooring line. Uh, it's got a diameter. Uh, in terms of structural properties, very stiff in the axial direction uh, and practically, you know, usually very, very low stiffness in bending. In terms of hydrodynamic loading on the mooring line, this is defined using Morrison's equation, so very simplistic compared to the um, full radiation diffraction simulation which we do for the floating components. It's, it's Morrison's equation is, is used for slender structures like, like mooring lines, like wires and chains. Um, Finally, we just have a quick look at the power takeoff mechanism, uh, which would be just kind of it's sort of hidden on screen here. And I could maybe try and show it to you by hiding uh, the flotation devices, and you might be able to just see uh, internally there we have um, PTO. If I can just have a quick look at that, so the PTO hide all the elements temporarily. I'll turn on the PTO spring. Uh, so that's basically we're modeling a linear power takeoff. Um, mechanism which has got a certain length, um, it's got certain distances before it hits the end stops which means it physically has reached the end of its stroke um, and then it's, it's also got damping coefficients which when, when the upper and lower float move in, in op opposite movements to each other there's a, a, a linear or a constant resistive force which um, 
induces the this is how the power takeoff mechanism works and this is um, quantified in Flexcom using a damping coefficients be, be they constant or linear or, or so on and then the end stop stiffnesses control how, how the spring goes from sort of linear very flexible to very rigid if, if, if the device were to fully extend out and hit the end stops um, so as I said all that comes together in the floating dual body point uh, absorber component itself where we've got all of the inputs from all of the, the predefined components so once the geometry the structure of the device is in place and on screen and, and you can see it in the model view and that's fully finalized the next step then really is to start going on and to start modeling the, the, the environment the wave conditions that the device is subject to so we may, we'll take a little quick break now and we return to uh, the wave environment in the next tutorial.